Hello everybody, I am Conquering History Games, and welcome back to the return of Kaiser Reich Guides. I know that you are all excited, I sure am excited to be back. And, with a brand new addition, for those of you who haven't seen my live streams, that's right, I've got a face cam now, huh? Which I'll probably actually move to the right when we cut later on, because there's going to be a lot of cuts, it's a very long and complicated process, and so I'm going to try to edit it so it's, it's understandable. Um, sorry that I've got a mask over my face, but I live in El Paso, Texas, and, well, just look it up. Anyway, so what I'm going to be showing you all today is, uh, this is in, uh, the, the new Syria version of Kaiserreich, the beta. And, uh, but this should be the way that it works going forward, although there's going to be one thing which I'm going to talk about uh, when we get there that is potentially a bug that they're probably going to fix later. But if it's not a bug, you'll just know how to do it anyway. Uh, so we're going to be playing as the French Republic, which got massively, massively reworked. I'm actually a huge fan of it now. And let me tell you something, if you're somebody who likes fighting resistance, then this is the thing for you. Now, this is not going to be a full-blown French Republic guide. Uh, what this is, is how do you get Napoleon as Emperor, specifically Louis, the Napo Louis Napoleon as the Emperor of the French Republic, uh, where he will be known as Napoleon VI. Well, it's a long and arduous journey, and luckily you've got me here to show you how to do it. Um... Now, as I've done in previous Kaiserite guides, though, there is going to be usage of console commands occasionally and things like that, just to save myself time on demonstrating how it is. But, but rest assured, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> whoa, that coughing's bad news. Now I'm all right, just got something in my throat. Rest assured, this way works. I've run it through multiple times, okay? So, just the first thing that I want to point out that you should do uh, before we start cutting ahead is... Um, when you're playing as the French Republic, you uh, you are the, the nation in exile, and you have a lot of different areas here that you have occupied. You're going to want to keep the resistance under 80%. None of them are higher than 56% at the start. In my experience, uh, Chad out here tends to get upset a lot, so does Tunisia. But um, what I just did for when I was going through this, I would just switch everything over to martial law. I'm not saying that that's optimal. Um, but just doing a combination of martial law and spies, it actually was pretty easy to keep the resistance underneath 80% and get the compliance relatively high. And you're going to want to do that in the long term anyway so that you can core those areas. So just do that, and you should never have to worry about any sort of uprisings. There will also be periodic events, which I'm not going to go over every single one of them, but there will be periodic events throughout your campaign where people will be attacking your rail lines or distributing pamphlets or and just a, a multitude of different things and you'll just get choices of, of different options which will cost you political power or stability uh, and things like that those do not matter a ton so i leave it up to you to determine what to do in each of those individual instances but broadly speaking besides uh you know increasing compliance or increasing resistance it's usually a choice between do you want more political power right now or do you want to permanently lower your base stability now with that out of the way let's actually start looking into um how this works you're going to start with Peyton, uh and uh, you know here the lion of verdun and uh i'll show you what happens next the first event that you're going to get is, uh, well not the first event, but in regards to this is going to be something called the Bear or the Rooster, where essentially you need to choose between uh, if I you're going you. to be supporting General, where is he, General Mordok, Henri Mordok, who is the, uh, the Bear, or if you're going to, uh, you know, work with the Cock himself, Charles de Gaulle, who uh, you can go now, there's a couple of different ways you can get him in power, but we're not going to go over that right now. Uh, what you're probably going to want to do is say the lion does not take sides, debate is healthy, support neither. This has to do with uh, your military tree. So if you had gone with supporting, um, yeah, if you support Mordok, you're going to be able to establish the Supreme Command. This is going to unlock later anyway, because Mordok is going to be the one who we're going to put in charge. But if you had gone with de Gaulle, you would have opened the Ministry of War. Now, just a general, um, <clears throat> no matter what path you're taking as National France, uh, if you pick one or the other one of these guys now and then coup the other one into power so for example if you were to establish the supreme command meaning you're doing mordock's che uh, teachings but then later on you put um de gaulle in charge via a national populist coup that's not going to work in the sense that like, oh that way i can get the military of one person's mind but actually have the leader of the other one. no it will cancel out all the progress that you've made on the other one and then you have to do this one 
um, and vice versa. Just as a heads up. So anyway, do not take a side. The next major event is the other Marshal retires, where you're going to lose Marshal de Espere uh, as a, as your other potential field marshal. Then you need to. This is essentially where you are choosing who is going to be the successor to Bitton when he dies, because he is kind of getting up there, uh, or retires or whatever. You do not want to pick either of these, because again, the choice is between the Bear and de Gaulle. Uh, even though in the long term you're going to go with Mordok you do not want to pick either of them right now so you need to pick the lion does not need to divide his prerogative and so that's effectively not choosing a uh, successor then you're going to open up some decisions which should uh you know show themselves here momentarily uh okay in the meantime let me just do whatever uh, also, don't take too much stock in a lot of the numbers and things that you see on the screen for the purposes of this guide because I, I did just did a quick run through campaign solely for the purposes of uh, showing how this stuff works. Okay, you know what? We're going to cut back when this is here. <clears throat> okay, so it takes a couple of weeks and then you're going to get this pop-up here called the Lion and the Bear where basically you are jockeying for influence between the two. Uh, now, there's going to be a series of ticking events. Um where Mordok will be able to um, increase his political influence. You can actually trigger them early if you click, for example, in this case, fight back against democratic rhetoric, which is available because Mordok in the radio is there. So uh, we're just going to let a few days go by, and you're going to see what pops up. Now, I'm not going to go over every single one of these events, but uh, I believe that the first option will always... Well, well here we go. Yeah, rousing speech, whatever. Uh, but you're going to be presented with two options. And the first option is where you will get some sort of small temporary bonus for letting Mordok do whatever it is he's doing, be it a march or, a, or a <clears throat> giving a speech on the radio, whatever. Or alternatively, you could shut them down so that he doesn't get influence and uh, that'll reduce stability. You're just going to basically always want to take the first option and his uh, influence will continue to creep up. You actually have a little bit of wiggle room here uh, because your influence can, uh, Mordok's influence is, I hope I'm pronouncing that right by the way, I, I didn't look it up, I probably should have. Uh, but we'll call him Henri. So Henri's influence is going to to greatly increase. Uh, I've gotten it to where he, for example, had like 13 influence and Peyton had two. Uh, so you definitely have some wiggle room here. The important thing is that um, Mordok needs to win the... Uh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. He needs to win the fight for influence. And do not do Operation Tokata. Don't even worry about what that is. If it pops up... You've messed up. Oh, actually, I just realized I needed to move my thing here in the corner. My bad. Move my face cam out of the way. Yeah, so just don't don't even worry about it. So we're just going to cut ahead once more. Now, eventually, you are going to, and I just depend on you guys, just check the, check the calendars in the top right until we hit about 1940, and it'll show you broadly when these things are going to happen. Uh, so eventually, the Peyton government, there's going to be a coup in which Mordok takes power. Uh, you're going to kick out Peyton. You're also going to kick out de Gaulle and Hotkloke uh, as generals. So do not and to, don't expect to be able to have them around, um, except unless you take a different path. So the Comité de Salut National, um, which I think uh, my, my French is so rusty, but I believe this means the Committee of National Health, uh, is going to take charge. So this is going to increase the popularity of the authoritarian Democrats and lower that of the social conservatives, social liberals, and market liberals, as well as reducing the paternal autocrats who were uh, previously in charge. Okay? So you now get a brand new focus tree available to you here. Um, and you're gonna, and now you have the establishing the Supreme Command. So if you had been doing de Gaulle's for some reason before, it's now gone. Um, and, uh, all right, so I'm just double checking my notes. So now you're going to be in charge and then there's going to be a series of events where, um, there's still the potential for a coup. So you are not safe yet. Excuse me. I'm getting my paths confused. There's just so many, uh, but yeah, you actually are safe. You're eventually going to get this trial where essentially you're deciding what to do with Peyton. Now I'm showing this event because I think it is actually really important. Now, um, some of you have probably been watching this or maybe they already turned off and said, no, 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 no. The Kaiserreich devs have already shown how to do this. There's no need for a video of this. 
wrong because there was two mistakes they made the actual devs in their um in their their message um and i've seen other people talk about how you get napoleon as emperor and nobody seems to have gotten it 100 percent right until i came along think into me uh so no offense to anybody else i'm just saying these are probably honest mistakes and i'm explaining how you fix them so the trial you're going to get three choices you could either sentence Peyton to death you can give him life in prison or you could say he's not a threat and commute his sentence to house arrest. Now, objectively speaking, unless you're a real stability hound, well, yeah, everybody likes stability, but you, probably objectively speaking, the best the best min max route to go here would be to commute his sentence to life in prison because that way you're going to actually gain stability instead of losing it, and you're going to gain popularity in authoritarian democracy as well as gaining popularity in social conservatism, which you're eventually going to cert switch to later. So that's good to have, and your only costs you 15 political power. However, um, and again, I've run this multiple times. If you if you do not sentence him to death, um, the next event is not going to work correctly. This could be a bug. This could be something people have not noticed. Maybe everybody was just sentencing him to death. But if you don't say, but like it is optional here. It doesn't seem like it would have anything to do with Napoleon, but it does. So you want to sentence him to death. Unless that gets fixed in the future, all right? But I'm just, I'm really lingering on this because I want you all to understand. The the Law of the Exiles, which is the next event, doesn't work if you don't do that, all right? Okay, we're back. So uh, after a couple of months, a little bit over a couple of months, check the calendar, you're going to get this event, the Law of the Exile, which is referring to the, uh, the Exile Law from 1886, where anybody who was an heir to an imperial dynasty is banned from France. Um... And uh, basically, Louis Bonaparte wants to uh, rejoin uh, the French Republic because he's been living in Switzerland. He's born in Belgium, goes to England, and then lives in Switzerland. And uh, he says he wants to enter into the Algerian Military Academy, which is also really important to note. Um, so you can choose to repeal the law, and you'll get a little bit of political power, or else you'll say this was created for a good reason. You want to repeal the law so he will come home. Now, nothing's going to happen at first. It's going to take a couple of months for him to arrive, and I'll show you that event right now. So that earlier event happened in March. We're now in May, and finally you'll get a Bonaparte back on French soil uh, where he actually gets off the boat, and he says we have to all do our part to defeat the communards, whatever. Uh, and you'll get 2,000 manpower. Again, I can't stress this enough. If you don't kill Pétain, Napoleon will not arrive. Uh, now, what is the reason for this? Uh, obviously, a lot of the situation, as we're going to see, is kind of meant to be a recreation of the original Napoleon's rise to power. So maybe instead of killing the king, you kill the old head of government, right? You kill Pétain instead of killing, killing the king, and that sets up the situation. I don't know if it's a bug. I really don't. Um, but that's just how it works. I've done this multiple times. I just, I don't, I'm... I don't want people in the comments saying like, hey, I, uh, how come when I, I repealed the Law of the Exiles, Bonaparte never showed up? You have to kill Beitan. All right, I'm, I'm done harping on it. Let's move on. But he's enlisting in the Academy uh, on his way. He's going to go to Algiers to enlist in the Academy. So this is another thing I want to really, really stress. He has arrived in France, but as you will see, he is not a general. This was another thing that... Um, People have been saying, even uh, even the, and I don't like to go on Reddit, but people kept linking me to it. Uh, if you go onto the Reddit thing by the Kaiserreich devs, it, it says in there, um, actually I have it in my notes. Uh, all right, no, I don't have it in my notes, but I think that what they wrote was Napoleon gets in the army and three years later creeping to a level five general. Actually, that might not have been the Kaiserreich team. That might have been somebody else who said that. But a lot of people think Napoleon enters your army right away. He does not, and that is very important because of uh, another one of the key steps. So we're just gonna fast forward now to when he does enter your army, okay? Now, as you can see, by just checking the calendar, it's been almost three years. Now you get General Bonaparte. After years of training, Louis Bonaparte rides forth from the, um, you know, I just realized I keep calling him Napoleon, but he's still just Louis right now, my bad. Um, so, with the vigor of our, uh, he rides force from the Algier Military Academy. He will become a general. You come over here, you'll see him, and he is as plain as can be. The only thing that um, is different about him is he has the media personality, which means his army reassignment duration is uh, is plus one hundred percent. 
Um, but that's actually good. It's good for grinding. It basically means that you can turn them into anything that you want because um, unless something has changed that I'm not aware of, the more traits that your general has, the harder it is for them to get new traits. That's why ideally, if you're grinding a general, you wanna maybe only grind the trait up until 90% or, or if you're really feeling brave, go up to 99% and then stop and try to get as many of them up to about the 90s as possible and then you level them up. So uh, what you're gonna have to then do before you have um, taken back mainland France, which as you see, because it's taken several years, the Commune of France is already at war with Germany, which means that if you go into your decision menu here, if you have 30 political power, you can be at war with them within 30 days at any given moment. And that not to mention uh, that Canada could get involved and declare war on the Union of Britain, and of course the two of you are in a, in a group together. Uh, so you it's going to be a little bit tricky. You've got to get Louis up to level 5 minimum before you've taken back Paris. Uh, now there's a couple of different ways to do that. So for example, it kind of depends on how the things go down in India. You can maybe grind over in India. In this, in this particular game that I was playing, that doesn't work out because it started early, way early, so I helped unify it, and uh, so you can't do that here. But what you could do also is you just come over, in this case, to the American Civil War, which is still ongoing. You can definitely grind over there. Uh, somebody once advised me to just like get involved in the Cairo Pact War somehow, and you could do a lot of grinding there. It's really up to you. Um, there's guides online on how to do it. Uh, just try, you know, it's basically just how many armies are fighting per hour is what it comes down to. So from here on, you're going to see a lot of console command stuff um, just to speed things along, okay? All right, so eventually the time's going to come where you've grinded up Louis enough. I console command this, that's why, uh, and you know, he'll, he'll get random assignments, but that's why he has no traits, but he's somehow still level six. I just console commanded it. And uh, so then you can go to war with the Commune of France, and all I wanted to show you guys here is uh, that you did not have to, um, you do not have to end the war to uh, start to get the events regarding the French Republic. So we've just annexed the Commune of France, and you're probably going to have to end up chasing the Third International all over the world. Uh, you know, you'll probably have to defeat the Union of Britain, you'll have to defeat Chile, you might have to go to Iceland, wherever, uh, just as a heads up. So we're just waiting for the events to start popping up, which uh, should just take a minute. You know, I guess we'll just cut back. Excuse me, I'm just, uh, I'm so tired, it's been a day. What I meant to say was not the elections, is that uh, you're going to get uh, access to some new focus tree areas once you've... Uh, taking control of, of just Paris. So you'll have here, for example, France Indivisible, uh, which uh, is kind of tricky because it gets rid of the anti-communard spirit and you get lingering communard influence, which is gonna every day increase the support of the totalists, syndicalists, and the radical socialists. It probably shouldn't be too, too big a deal. You might just have to take some political actions every once in a while, but there's gonna be a lot of internal stuff going on when, when you take back uh, the uh, mainland France, which I'm not gonna get into, but it'll open this up once you've gone that far, okay? Now let's actually fast forward to the elections themselves. Okay, so what I've done here now is uh, I just set things up so it's the post-war world. You know, you, there's, there's no war. We're done with the communards. Uh, Napoleon is now set to attack Germany eventually. And you're going to get your first new elections uh, event. Now you could choose to go with the social liberals, but it's like, what? Uh, either way, Henry Mordock will be in charge. What you want is you want to have the Bloc National to win the majority. So this is going to switch you from authoritarian democracy to uh, social conservatives. And you will have periodic... Okay, let's fix that. You're going to have periodic elections afterwards. Uh, you could Now notice that the elections happened before I was done preparing the new um, elections. And then this is going to... This is going to automatically complete whichever party is already in charge. So if you had gone with the, uh, I think it's here, Radical Reconciliation. Yeah, yeah, that would have automatically, that's going to then automatically finish. This is kind of like the Pacific States of America's chart where you can flip between them depending on which party is in power and work on different things. Uh, but what this is just going to do for you is it's going to uh, revive the national block. And that is the Social Democratic branch of the tree. And I'll show you more about that in just a second. All right, so this event is going to pop up after you've done the um, the actual. It's my cat meowing. Don't worry about him; he's fine. Uh, revive the national block. It's gonna. It's not going to happen right away, as you could say. It takes a couple of weeks, and uh, you'll get some 
presidential nominations first. And if you've done things right up to this point, by which I mean uh, Bonaparte no, is a level 5. I guess in theory you could have still not gotten him to level 5 when you start the war with the Commune of France. I'm just saying it depends on just how much risk you want to take. It is a very difficult uh, run. You know, you got to thread some needles because you you got to worry about Germany taking all of the Commune of France as well. A lot of that's going to depend on Russia and things like that. Anyway, if he's at least level 5, you will get him as a potential option. The young officer who has so recently enraptured the imagination of our people with his exploits is being considered by some who see him as a potentially popular figurehead. So you click the war hero Bonaparte. And um, now, this was another thing which I don't know if it was a bug, but in my personal run, uh, you actually do not get him in power just yet. Um, but don't, meaning like his picture. Uh, we'll talk about that more though in a minute. All right, so now we've taken the... I gotta stop saying all right. <laughs> um, I need to get some sleep. I, I, uh... This is after you've already gone all the way down. Again, just... Now, normally this is gonna go... Take much longer than it has been if you're looking at the calendar. Uh, but just stay with the social conservatives until you finish proclaiming the Fourth Republic. Um... Then you're going to get this pop-up where it's going to say, Bonaparte has served well during the transition, elect him again. Now again, this is something that is not really um, intuitive because if you if you go with Bonaparte again, you're going to get 50 political power, 10 stability, and you'll get an effect called the President Prince, which hurts your stability as well as your daily political power gain, whereas De La Roque, uh, he gains you political power and stability as well as an additional political power compared to Napoleon. So this is why it's tricky. It's not intuitive. You want to go with Bonaparte, though, for the long-term gain. So now, yeah, there you have it. Uh, he is in charge. There's his little bio. He's just in a boring little suit, though. You're still not there yet, which is going to bring us to the next step. Now, eventually, you're going to go to war with Germany. Again, just console annex them here. The way that this is usually going to work is you're going to get a couple of options here when you go down the uh, France Indivisible a tree where essentially you can try to negotiate with France for getting uh, Nancy back, but screw that, right? You've worked this hard, you might as well go further. You're instead going to go with the indestructible bonds and come down here towards the, uh, well, I guess technically you can you can do this without the, uh, that. Anyway, indestructible bonds, baby, and prepare for the war, demand the return of Alsace-Lorraine, and then afterwards you're going to have to decide the fate of Germany. Uh, as any Frenchman knows, the Rhine is the natural border, so just go ahead and occupy the Rhineland and split up the rest later. Uh, and then it'll start to give you the events up here, uh, where they'll, yeah, here we go, where you start to, you know, choose the fates of some of them, and you can choose to do whatever you want, you could occupy it all, or you can create a bunch of, you know, probably break up a bunch of German states, but the key here is that you have to hold Alsace-Lorraine, okay? We are now 500 days, roughly, from when Louis became uh, the president of France following the uh, creation of the Fourth Republic. Uh, and then this is, of course, what a proper France should look like. Uh, of course, this is all debatable. Uh, anyway, but you'll then finally get the event as long as he is president and you hold Alsace-Lorraine. And do not worry, if you don't do it within 500 days, it'll just loop around again for another 500 days. So as long as you eventually get Alsace-Lorraine, this should pop up. Bonaparte ascendant Louis Napoleon has fought and earned his way to his sky-high approval among the French people. He led the exiles to victory and the liberation of the Metropole and served with distinction as the president across the end of the Third Republic and into the beginning of the Fourth Republic. His term in office saw victory over the Germans in the field. The, victory, the territory of Alsace-Lorraine, lost by his line in 1870, has once more been reclaimed for France. He stands as a major player in the world thanks to the leadership of great men like him. Oh, she stands, excuse me. With the stain of dishonor from losing Alsace-Lorraine reversed by Louis, if he desired, he could confidently call a referendum for establishing the third French Empire with the Bonapartes back at the helm. The people follow his, follow his every action in the paper and over the radio, anxiously awaiting his decision. You could just let the Fourth Republic stand, which will give you political power and stability, which, you know, when you're trying to core France, is sure helpful. But where's the fun in that? Long live the Emperor, we get the event, the Dawn of the New Empire, which should pop up right now. Give it a day or two. Also, uh, pay no attention to, like, my manpower and stuff. I wasn't really trying to core or anything. The Dawn of the New Empire, 
Louis Bonaparte is no more. He will now be known as Napoleon the Sixth, Emperor of the French and successor of the previous reigning French emperors, Napoleon the First and Napoleon the Third. The creation of the new empire didn't come from the old Republican political class, but directly from the people who approved the new constitution in a landslide during a plebiscite. After hearing the news, Napoleon VI paraded magnificently in Paris. He drove down the Champs Elysees aboard a military vehicle encircled by a mass of Parisians shouting his name, and followed by three columns of the best veterans of the last French wars. Napoleon accompanied these warriors first in the reconquest of France and then in the Great War to finally retake Alsace-Lorraine. He didn't only command them, but fought along them with only the pride of France as his ideal. The people of France are now rewarding the war hero appropriately. They recognized his valor and decided to offer him the throne as a show of their faith in him. The Republican politicians were outraged by what they call a coup d'etat, but Napoleon knows that the French nation is in its people and not its politicians. The emperor didn't get an official religious coronation, choosing to base his legitimacy on the mandate of the people rather than on the church, but did end his Parisian parade with an impressive mass at the church of the Madeleine, Madeleine to show the uh, friendship of the empire with a thousand-year-old French Catholic Church. The form of the new state will be a constitutional monarchy. Napoleon VI will thus rule alongside an elected parliament to best serve the interests of the people. The current parliament, dominated by the Bloc National, will be kept and will serve as the first legislature under the new empire. With the emperor at its head, France seems to be ready to live through another period of peace and glory. Vive l'Empereur! Vive l'Armée! It vive la France! So, you now become known as the French Empire. Napoleon, of course, gets his awesome new portrait. Uh, you're still social conservative. There's no paternal autocracy here. Uh, and probably most importantly, you get the brand new, uh, there's a new bio, actually, if you read it, uh, but also the new effect, which is the new eagle, which is going to increase your stability by 5%, and a daily political power gain of 0.10 which is very key to coring France because, uh, uh, you know, cleansing the stench of the communards out is going to take a long time and it's going to cost you a lot of political power, uh, but you got plenty of time to do it in. And there you have it. That is how you get <clears throat> Napoleon VI on the throne. Again, I do not mean any offense to anybody who, who has, like, already made guides on the Internet. I just couldn't find any that were completely correct. And I know people sometimes prefer to watch a video, even though these can sometimes be long, as you can see by the time almost half an hour explaining this one event um if you would let me know if you would like to see me actually play this out properly uh which would probably take a very long time and my computer might explode uh because we're going to be getting like the, into the late 40s uh by then for all we know uh but uh i'm so sorry that i haven't done kaiserite guides uh, pretty much all year I, I my deepest apologies i'm gonna i'm gonna return to form um and uh try to shake this 2020 off us i hope you all enjoyed the face cam let me know what you think about that. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell so you'll always be notified whenever a new video uh, from this channel goes up. And if you really, really want to support, uh, there should be a link to my Patreon in the description below. Every little bit helps. I'm Conquering History Games. It's great to be back. And you all have yourselves a wonderful rest of your 2020 if possible. And a happy new year.